Hello. So, this one's basically part six to my hitchhiking days. Uh, following up that encounter with the uh, wolf bear like creature. So, a couple things I, I wanted to add um, to go back on, on the last one there. Um, my walking stick, the spear, um, when it had went through, I'm guessing it, it severed the, uh, the spine because um, it was wedged in there and I could not get it out. It was stuck in there, wedged between bones. Um, another thing, I don't, I don't guess I really need to add, but maybe some listeners may not have listened to the other, you know, twenty plus episodes. But um, I'm pretty good in the woods. I'm very familiar with a lot of uh, wildlife and basic survival and even advanced survival. Um, I was raised in the woods and grew up on a cattle farm. Um, I spent more time in the woods than even the above average type person. Um, it was kind of my escape to uh, being the black sheep and um, you couldn't really get in trouble when you're walking around in the woods, you know. Whereas it seemed like <clears throat> if I was home, I was always in trouble. So I spent a lot of time out there, and I, I just I I would watch and observe and just pay attention to the smallest details um, when it came to being outdoors. So I was I was a very good outdoorsman, um, and I could hold my own for sure. And I had grown accustomed to basically taking my, my siblings out because of how awesome they knew I was in the woods. The same with, uh, you know, being the youngest brother. I mean, my entire childhood was, was wrestling and fighting and arguing. Um, and it, it wasn't against, you know, smaller. It was always against bigger, you know and older and stronger um, so I had to adapt and overcome um, and by by my early teenage years they 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 recognized this also and uh, I stopped getting stopped getting picked on quite so much you know and some of them some of my siblings even look to me for their protection after a certain point you know what I mean um, like, I had to fight my way up through life, you know. I've got the scars to prove it, too. Um, but I was really good in the outdoors. And so, I had worked my way down that valley, you know. And there were, um, I don't know what, what creek this was, but it had some good flow to it. And it, it had these small fish in it. And, um... I made camp there by that road um, and I had set up you know I, I made a not quite big lean to it was it was just a little lean to uh, the main reason being I was right by the road and I figured somebody might come by you know and I didn't want to disturb that the local area too much it felt like I wasn't quite out in the wild being by a road like this you know um, but I had set, set my tooth and my, uh, my claw out on a rock to dry and I'm setting up my camp and these crows, they were blackbirds. I'm figuring they were crows cause they sounded like crows, but it was, uh, three crows had, had come down and what got my attention is the raven started fighting them and they were fighting. They were going at it over there by the tooth and claw. And um, 
I spun around and I started yelling, hey, 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 and I was running towards it. And uh, those blackbirds had, uh, they took the tooth. Um, they just flew off with it. And even as they were flying away, it was like the three of the blackbird, the three blackbirds were still fighting over it amongst themselves while they were also flying one at a time like switching out who would attack the raven because the raven was trying to chase after him too and um i just watched that that fight happen and they flew back south straight up that ridge i had just come down um and uh so i snagged up the claw you know um they almost made off with the claw also and um this claw was this claw was a good four and a half five and a half inch claw um and just the darkest brown black the way like the uh, the lines in it ran it almost looked like it was made out of wood like some sort of dark exotic wood but it was a it was a claw and um it still had you know some of the i don't know tissue i don't want to use too descriptive of a word but it still had some some of the material that was holding it in the paw uh it still had some of that on it and i wanted to get that off you know um, so what i did is i where i built the fire i kind of like set it off to the side of that rather than sit it set it back out to dry in the sun I kept it over by my fire you know and um, I put like a rock on top of it and and kept the the side that needed to dry towards the fire um, you know and I set up camp um, I ate and ate and ate and after not eating um, and sparsely drinking I, I got pretty tired pretty quick and um, so I slept through the night um, uneventful nobody drove by you know uh, the next morning came I broke camp and I started and started heading down this dirt road um, it kind of twisted and turned up this up this mountain and out of this valley and I just stayed on that road um, it was rough walking even though it was a road um, there were some times where the gravel was loose enough it felt just as rough if not rougher than if I was just hiking through the raw mountains um, I'm, I'm I was used to going like three to five miles an hour uh, when I'm walking on the road sometimes even faster it depends on the energy of the day and all that but uh, I was lucky if I was pushing one maybe two miles an hour on this dirt road uh, how steep it was and how it just turned back and forth and um, I never encountered anybody that next day um, you know and I set up camp again right by the road and uh, I camped out on that road that night woke up rinsed repeated the next day and it was just coming up on the time where I would normally stop to make camp because of how cold the environment is um, and I could hear off in the distance every once in a while like traffic like a car doing at least 50 60 miles an hour but you could hear them um, so I figured I'd make the additional push for that night you know and it got me out from that dirt road onto like a, a two-lane blacktop road <clears throat> and you could see off to the right um, the glow of like a city kind of illuminating the 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 valley of mountains off to the right which would have been um, the east uh, 
and then to the the west it was just darkness and mountains you know and I had been out there for several days and I figured I, I wanted to uh, you know if anything stock up and get some get some uh, snacks and maybe something to sew my my clothes back together from you know they I had I still had a couple other shirts but the ones I favored wearing like back then you had these uh, these flannel looking hoodies and it ripped all the way through my flannel hoodie and that was kind of like my favorite thing to wear <clears throat> so I wanted to get back to town and and at least get me a sewing kit which I should have had with me anyway but I didn't think I would need you know and um, this car comes up and he he sees me and he's like slows down and then he backs up and he goes where are you going and I was like uh, there's a town up here I'm I'm heading up here he said it looks like you've been living in the woods I said I've been out there about a week he said damn he said you need a ride I said that'd be cool you know and uh, I don't want to use this fella's name either uh, I'm gonna call him Wally so uh, I hopped in Wally was driving like a, it was an old Cutlass Supreme looking thing uh, I say old I mean it's old now but back then they were everywhere you know it, it was maybe three years old five years old I don't know um, but, and, you know, we start talking and I tell him about like, you know, what I thought I'd fought like a wolf and, you know, he starts laughing about it, you know, and he tells me some stories about when he, when he was younger, he was right around while he was in his early thirties, you know, he was pretty cool. So he took me into town there and, uh, it was just after dark, you know couple hours after dark uh, but there was a Walmart you know so I went in there I got a sewing kit um, I got some snacks and supplies and, you know Wally was a he said he was a hot shot he was dropping this car off and if I wanted to I could just hang out with him you know because he does these long drives and it gets boring I was like you know that, that sounds pretty cool um, so he took this car to this one place and he came out with keys to another and he got in that car and we headed back out the same road we had come into town on and uh we drove all the way to uh, boise idaho on this road and this road was twisty turny and just it took forever but <clears throat> we were up all night and I'd say it was around noonish uh, when we got to Boise. Um, it was just a crazy night, dude. Uh, he definitely he knows how to drive. That that's for sure. Um, and then we slept. He got a hotel and we slept there in in Boise until you know that evening. And then um, he took me out to eat his treat. Uh, you know and then we went and got we dropped that car off and we got another car it was like nine or ten o'clock at night and we started from Boise we drove all the way to uh, Salt Lake City once again straight through the night um, we got there a little bit earlier you know and same deal with the hotel um, sleeping uh, waking up uh, he would feed me if anything this is gonna be its own I'll come back to these days uh, cuz the time I spent with Wally doing swapping these cars um, was crazy um, it all went by pretty quick uh, I did stuff I would have never done I don't know anyway so we car swapped and, and uh, hotel hopped all the way. The next thing I knew, um, like we went from 
from Boise to Salt Lake to Denver to outside of Chicago. Um, there's this town, it was Aurora. Um, and <clears throat> we come into Aurora and after the like week I was with him on the road doing that um, as cool it, as it was uh, I told him man I was like I gotta I gotta head a different direction because he was gonna go from Aurora back west and um, I don't know something was drawing me east so we parted there in Aurora there's like this main interstate that, that ran through the north and we came in from the west on like a highway um, so where where he was was like a, this main road was a toll road so it's it's on ramps and off ramps were weird and um, so you had all these trucks kind of lining um, this other road before the uh, to on and off ramps to this toll road <clears throat> and I'm walking from the hotel up towards this toll road and you got all these trucks on the right kind of pulled off the curve there and there's some over on the left so really the road going between them is kind of tight but I didn't want to walk in the grass so I wound up walking in that tight little road area and there was a trucker up ahead checking his load and he saw me walking up you know and he just kept looking at me and smiling and shaking his head um, I got to like 20 to 30 feet from him and he he had said out like he made a comment about the color of my hair um, you know cuz I'm a redhead he said I sure do have some fiery some fiery red hair I just you know I laughed and um, said that's not the first time I've heard that in my life you know he said uh, what's with the backpack what you doing and I was like you know I'm, I'm kind of just I'm making my way wherever it goes you know and he said that's pretty cool he was a uh, he was he was a pretty old trucker man he, he reminded me of like Jerry Garcia looking you know with the white hair and like the the beard and all that and the glasses and um, he had a little pot belly on him but he had you could see when he was pulling the ratchets on his uh his load you could just see the muscle movement through his arms um he's a pretty strong old man you know and uh he was like man you remind me of my son like 30 years ago you know um, <clears throat> and so we got to talking and I noticed he had a main trailer uh, and his uh, like his truck said main on it and I was asked I asked him you know where are you going he explained to me you know what he was hauling and where he's running and he uh, he had to drop that load off and then he was gonna head back um, and I was welcome to join him I said well hell yeah I said uh, I said I'd never been up on that side of the the Appalachians man so that sounded kind of cool uh, he he only had to drop that load off right there somewhere in that town and then uh, it wasn't long and we were heading we were heading towards we were heading to the east man and uh, I think that there's a a good spot to end it hello just wanted to say thank you to all the new subscribers and um, I really do appreciate the comments and and the likes and the thumbs up and all that it it really does make a difference as far as who all gets to see these and and getting them out there so I wanted to say thank you um, and I appreciate it so I'm working on getting Patreon up and going and um, I, I want to say thank you to my Patreon members. Um, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so thank you. 
and this part is for my Patreon members. Um, I appreciate you.